Welcome to this As I Am Explainer. In this video, we will explain how to apply for carer's allowance. Where to apply for carer's allowance. Download the carer's allowance application form at gov.ie. How to fill out the carer's allowance application form. Step 1. Enter your personal details, such as your name, address, contact information, and marital status. Step 2. If you have a partner, enter their personal details, such as their name, PPSN, and address. Only answer question 17 if you are married or in a civil partnership and not living together. Step 3. As carer's allowance is a means-tested payment, you must disclose all your sources of income here. If you have a partner, they must also declare all of their financial resources for the means test. To prove your income, you and your partner must attach three recent pay slips to the form. If you or your partner are self-employed, you must provide your most recent set of accounts. If you stopped self-employment, you must give documents showing how and when it ended. Include details of any employment schemes you or your partner have availed of, such as the Further Education and Training Scheme. If you receive maintenance, disclose the amount and give a copy of the maintenance agreement. You must disclose if you or your partner receive a social protection payment, pension, or allowance. You can provide evidence for this payment by supplying three months' bank statements from the accounts being paid. Remember that you can claim certain social protection payments alongside half-rate carer's allowance. You must disclose any savings in accounts, such as banks and credit unions, in Ireland or abroad. You can provide evidence for these saving accounts with three-month statements for each account. You must disclose any stocks or shares you have by sharing relevant statements or details. You must also disclose ownership or shared ownership of property that isn't your home. Similarly, you must disclose sale or transfer of property or business in the last three years. Outline details of this by sharing documents from solicitors about the financial transaction. Step 4. Share details of the person you are caring for. You must state your relationship with them and the date you began caring for them. If you don't live with the person you care for, you must detail the distance between your homes. You must also share what kind of communication systems are used between homes, e.g. alarm or landline. You must share how many days a week and how many hours of each day you provide care. If the person you care for attends a daycare, rehabilitative centre or care facility, you must give the address and days of week attended. You also need to provide a letter of confirmation from the care centre. If you share care with another person, you need to detail when you are providing care. You will be asked if you intend to work, be self-employed, or attend a course while you are providing care. Attach a letter from your course if you attend one. Remember, you must be working or studying for less than 18 and a half hours per week to be eligible. You also need to explain what arrangements you made for care while you work or study. Step 5. Share details of your nationality and any time you lived abroad in the last five years. Step 6. Share details of any children if you wish to claim an increase for a qualified child. You can apply for children over 18 if they are in full-time education. Step 7. Provide your payment details so that CARES allowance can be paid directly into your account. Step 8. Once you are sure you've provided all relevant information, you and a witness must sign this. If you are unsure, consult the checklist in Part 9 to confirm what information you should give. Step 9. The final part of the application form is the medical report. This comes in three sections. In the first section, you should describe the support needs of the person you care for. 
This includes specific difficulties they experience and how you provide care. E.g., if you care for someone who cannot use the toilet independently and you assist them. There is space at the bottom of section 1 to describe any additional care needs they have. Section 2 should be signed by both you and the person you provide care for. If they are unable to sign, they can leave a mark on the page instead. The signature must be witnessed by someone other than the carer or a member of the household. Section 3 must be completed by a doctor confirming the person's support needs. If you are applying for a child already receiving domiciliary care allowance, you don't need to get the medical report in Section 3 for this form. It is important that the doctor's report is not just a confirmation of the care recipient's diagnosis. It should clearly state how their daily life is affected and why they need full-time care. Step 10. Send your application and documents to Department of Social Protection, Social Welfare Services Office, Government Buildings, Ballinally Road, County Longford, N39E40. You should be informed of the decision within six weeks of your application. If your claim has been refused, you will be informed of the reasons behind this refusal. You can submit a revised application if your claim was refused due to inaccurate or outdated information. You also have the right to appeal the decision. Appeals should be made within 21 days of you receiving news of the decision. To appeal, write the reasons you are unhappy with the decision. You should include a copy of the decision you are appealing and relevant evidence in support of the appeal. Send this appeal to Social Welfare Appeals Office, Delir House, Delir Street, Dublin 2, DO2, XY31. Thank you for listening to this As I Am Explainer.